Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm going to give you an introductory tutorial in how to use Adobe Acrobat to proof your book, especially if you are sending this book back to your graphic designer with requested edits. So first things first, let's open up Adobe Acrobat. I have it open on my screen already. The next thing we need to do is to open up a PDF file. So I will navigate up to the top of the screen to File, Open. Now I can use my File Explorer to navigate to the location on my computer where I want to open my PDF. When you first open a file, Adobe Acrobat typically will open it to the full width of your entire screen. As I scroll through, this can be a bit difficult to understand exactly what I'm looking at on the page. I can use these tools at the top to zoom in or zoom out. However, I am going to use another tool to do this. To see your entire screen on the page all at once, navigate up to View, Page Display, and then click on To Page View. Now, as we scroll up and down, you'll notice that I now have a cover page. And what this means is that the first page is not a spread. This is a spread, two pages side by side. When you open up a book for the first time, there is this inside flap. This single page on its own is the cover page. And then from there, every preceding page is a spread. Fortunately, Adobe Acrobat can simulate this so that we can see the way our book will look in the physical world. Now, if you did click to page view and you still do not see your book in the proper format, try going back up to view and make sure that this option is selected. You want to show the cover page in the to page view. Now that we are viewing our PDF in the correct format, we are going to go ahead and use some tools to change some things or make edits. To make edits to your PDF, let's navigate over to the Comments tab. The Comments tab can be found over here on the side with this small chat box icon that says Comment. We will click on that and it will open up a tab on the side. In this tab, we can see comments that past people have left on this PDF. Now we're going to add our own. Let's say that we no longer wanted a break in thought in this area. What we will do is navigate to the top of the screen where there is a little comment bubble. We will click on this. Now this comment bubble has been loaded onto my cursor. Now wherever I want to place a comment, I will simply left click. On the side, a new place has appeared for us to leave a comment. Let's say that I would like to request my graphic designer remove that break in thought. Then I click post. And now this comment lives here in this PDF. Let's pretend that we no longer wanted this sentence to exist in here. There is a tool called the Strike Through Tool. This tool is located at the top of the screen and is indicated by this icon. You can use this tool one of two ways. You can highlight the text that you want to strike through and then click the Strike Through button. Or you can preload your cursor with the Strike Through button and then highlight what you would like to strike through. This indicates to your graphic designer that you would like to remove this sentence. If you would like to remove that strike through, all you need to do is click on it, and then with the corresponding comment panel, click delete. Next, let's look at the highlight button. The highlight tool works very similarly to the strike through tool. The highlight button can be found here. I can either load the highlight tool onto my cursor and then highlight a line, or I can highlight a line and then click the highlight button. This allows you to indicate a particular part of a sentence if you are wanting to only indicate, say, half of a sentence instead of a full sentence. Next, let's look at the insert tool. 
The insert tool works the same as the others. You can place your cursor here and then click it to indicate an insert. Or you can preload it onto your cursor and then insert it wherever you would like. On the side, it will make a place for you to insert text. So I can request that my graphic designer add a new sentence here. And click post. There are several other tools at the top here, which you can play around with if need to. The last one I'm going to talk about is the drawing tool. Let's say that we no longer wanted this icon to be located in this area. Let's say that we wanted this icon to now exist underneath the quote. So I'm going to use the drawing tool to draw an arrow and indicate that I would like this moved. All you need to do is left click and drag to draw an arrow, and then click and drag to draw the point of the arrow. Now I can easily navigate through my PDF, clicking on the comments that I have made, and it is easy to figure out what you would like changed throughout the whole document. Technically, Adobe Acrobat is saving this file the whole time you are using it. However, to be safe, let's go ahead and do a manual save on it. First, I'm going to close the comment panel on this side, and then I am going to navigate to the top. I'm going to go to File and Save As. I'm going to do Save As because I would like to create a second version of this document, which I will send back to my graphic designer. I'm going to choose a location to save the file, and then I'm going to save this file with my own personal initials on them. This helps us know who is the last person who has edited this document. So instead of Becky Bain, now it will say, okay, I click save, and I am now safe to close the document. I can do this by clicking this file, close file button on the side. At this point, you are ready to email the document back to your graphic designer so they can go ahead and make changes. All right, guys, thank you very much. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, leave a comment below and go ahead and like and subscribe. It really helps us out. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.